And you welcome back to the polls. Um, a bit of an update for you. We understand that the New Patriotic Party has issued a statement indicating that it will be revising uh, its timelines uh, for the upcoming presidential and parliamentary primaries. Uh, we'll get the details for you shortly. Uh, also take you to the headquarters of the New Patriotic Party, where, of course, the party is receiving uh, some, uh, of course, uh, nominations uh, because the process started uh, way uh, last week or about two weeks ago. We had a number of uh, party supporters speaking up forms on behalf of all of the candidates involved. The live shot you see on your screens now uh, is what's happening as we speak at the headquarters of the governing New Patriotic Party. And uh, because of that, we'll be hearing any moment from now uh, from one of the candidates or aspirants who's vying to lead the New Patriotic Party. I'm talking about Alan Kujo Chermating. He's set to address the press uh, any moment from now, and you see some of the leading figures uh, of the party uh, step out from the party headquarters, where I believe he's been subjected uh, to, well, I, I don't know if it's fair to call it a rigorous vetting exercise. And so we'll be hearing uh, Alan's take after today's vetting. Uh, we know that other candidates or aspirants of the party uh, will be uh, going through that same process. So that will be done for a total number of about 10 individuals. The man you see on your screens now is in studio with me. I'm talking about Sami Krapu, once served uh, as a leading figure within the New Patriotic Party, uh, former uh, second, second, uh, second vice chairperson uh, of the New Patriotic Party. Thank you so much, sir, for Thank spending you. some time with us. You, you've you. gone under the radar. We've not been hearing from you uh, a lot. <laughs> 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 but it's good to have you. I mean, uh, we've seen the visuals coming through from the party headquarters. Nostalgia, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching all of these uh, activities take place. And it's feeds into this broad reorganization that's taking place within the New Patriotic Party. Ten candidates, and you're looking for only one to lead the NPP. That must be tough for you as a party. That is democracy. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your take on the, on the reorganization? I mean, starting from even the branch level where you started from, you got new constituency level, uh, uh, I mean, executives, and then we saw that exercise here in Accra to elect the national executives. Now is the face of the presidential. We'll talk about the presidential shortly. But your take overall on the reorganization process of your political party. OK, you did talk about nostalgia. <laughs> you know, um, the last time, I was yes. the one who actually received Alan's forms. Oh. As the second national vice chairman. Wow. So, wow. nostalgia indeed. Indeed, yes. Yeah. The process is very simple. I don't think there's going to be a vetting today. Just okay. submit his forms oh, today. He is submitting. Yeah, they accept then the they forms. Will they will study the forms. And then later They will schedule the a date day. for the vetting. Okay, and so, then, so then not, not to cut you, because you know more, much more about the processes, let's listen in to Alan Kujo I understand he's been addressing the press, so let's listen in. ...of the eight-year term of our executive administration. But whether we succeed or not in reaching our destination on this journey will depend on the choice that the key makers of our party make on the 4th of November this year. The choice to select the new flag bearer and leader of our great party. I want to use this opportunity to make a passionate appeal to the delegates who will be voting in our National Delegates Conference on the 4th of November. As delegates, you are representing not only your own interests, but also the interests of the rank and file of our party. What the rank and file of our party are asking for is that they need a new leader who will satisfy five basic conditions. They are looking for a leader we will help our party to break the eight in 2024 and help NPP to succeed itself in power. They are not just looking for a flag bearer. They are looking for a flag bearer who will become president in 2024, 2025, January. Secondly, they are looking for a candidate with a record of long service and commitment to our party and also someone who will seek and promote the welfare of the rank and file of our party. 
but they are also looking for a candidate who has the vision to move our party forward and modernize our party. They are looking for a candidate who has the competence, the experience and the knowledge to respond to the critical challenges of our time, which is to be able to create jobs for our teaming youth and to bring prosperity to our country. And last but not the least, they are looking for a candidate who will unify our party so that together we march towards victory in 2024. That candidate who fits this bill is your own brother, father, uncle, Alan John Kujo Chiramatin. And I'm using this platform to make a passionate and special appeal to our delegates that if the people of Ghana are asking for Alan to become the next president of our republic, please make Alan the leader and we'll break the eight. And this is my passionate appeal to you. Thank you and God bless you. Madam Patricia. So, that is a so you have uh, Alan Kujutramatin there uh, making his statement and uh, live pictures from the NPP headquarters where uh, he's uh, officially now uh, filed his nomination. We know that the processes will uh, follow through as the party has indicated. There's a revised uh, timeline now for the governing New Patriotic Party uh, with regards to the voting processes and that will also apply to some of the orphan constituencies. We've just seen that statement uh, coming through from the governing New Patriotic Party. We'll update you on that shortly, uh, but uh, Mr. Krabs is still here with us in studio and you've been listening to Alan Kujicharmantin deliver uh, his address. Um, he, he's the first to have gone through the process of filing his uh, nomination. We don't know if the nine others will join to make it 10. Uh, but some key statements he's been uh, making, indicating that if the people want Alan to be president, then the party must yield. It's as though he's, he feels he's in the lead already. Yeah, he is in the lead. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. From where I sit, mm. from the data that I see, he is in the lead. Um, my data, or our data, is correct because... It is validated by the polls mm -hmm. that have come out, very consistent. So I know he's in the lead. I know he's the one that the country actually wants, mm -hmm. and the country has been asking for. I know that he is the one. So he is in the lead, and um, it's very important that the delegates actually respond to the nation. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we select our candidate, and the nation has to approve. So that's what he's calling for, mm -hmm. that the delegates should respond to the nation's but I see that he acknowledges that there will be a step, first of all, uh, starting with the Super Delegates Conference. Absolutely. The delegates would have to decide, trim down the numbers, if indeed we're going to be dealing with a set of 10, and then eventually uh, the broader mass of, of, the, of the party. Do you feel that Alan will make it through all these stages? Oh, definitely he will. Uh, I mean, uh, what's giving you that confidence, by the way? Because I have the data. I mean, I sit... I mean, the data you're speaking to, I don't have that data. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I can't show it to you. <laughs> but the thing is that, yes, because thing. I'm crunching the whole thing. Right. Um, um, I'm also responsible for operations, like in Greater Accra. Mm -hmm. I work with uh, Honorable Sylvester Teta, who is the chairman of the right. operations committee and the rest. So I've been very instrumental in helping to restructure and set and put everything together. And I, I tested the hypothesis. When we started this all, right. I just looked at it and I said, OK, if everybody is saying that Alan Chemati is the man, mm -hmm the man of the moment, then if I, we go out there setting up the organization all the way to the polling station, we shouldn't have a problem. And we never did. So as I speak with you right now, our baseline is 21% set. And they are going to now bring in the rest, and we have so many months. And in certain places, we even have five out of five polling stations. So I know what I'm talking about. And of course, it's a snapshot. Right. It's always a snapshot. Mm -hmm. Here's where you are, things can change, people change their minds. Mm -hmm. But if we mm -hmm. work very hard at making sure that we get these votes out on that day, mm -hmm. ensuring that the votes and the votes are counted and declared for Alan Shemartin, he's going to be the next. Uh, very often, the Alan campaign is being criticized of feeling or ha of having some sense of um, entitlement. 
Is that still you, you feel, well, it's a stand, and, and that's the message you've been selling all through, as though there's a natural line of succession, and this is the time Yeah, many Yeah, pe many people feel so. Many people feel that. But you know the history of the party too well. Your elders say, and, and I'm sure you've heard from some of them, indicate that there's nothing as such. Well, then there is nothing as such to them. Okay. But many people feel so. So what we're going to yeah, do... That's why I'm asking about your view, because your opinion no, my view is very is that, critical. Yes, he talks about long service. Right. And I think long service must be rewarded mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. In any institution, people start from somewhere and they run through the ranks. You know? And so th there's so much experience you gather as you go. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and he's gathered that experience. You know, Alan has been with this party even before 1992, the formation. Alan was the president of the Young Executive Forum, and his vice president chairman was Mark Menu. Alan was contesting uh, with Kufuor Nanado in 1998 when he stepped down. Just so Kufuor, he wouldn't split the, right. the Akan front, so Ashanti front, so Kufuor could actually go through. And Alan actually also contested Nanado. And he yielded. He didn't want to push the party into, you know, a dire street. Right. And, and, and he served the party. You know, they, our first head office mm -hmm. at Koko Memli around here. It's yeah, it was the YEF, led by Alan, that mm -hmm. provided the office. So he's kind of gone through. And when he was at Emprotec, he helped a lot of our folks. You know, at that time, you know, Rollins was in power. Right. And there was absolutely no way if you had the MPP tag, you would even be able to, you know, have a better economy. So Alan was the one who was out there trying to help each and every one of us. So he served. And if people think that is his turn, then they probably will vote because they think he is his turn. If you think it's not his turn, that's your opinion. And so you vote against the fact that it's not his turn. But I believe that a majority of our people feel that he has served. And so he must be given the opportunity to lead us into the 2024. How about you know, the, the predictions that the dynamics within the party has changed. You've had, for instance, some um, uh, phenomenon faces that have um, emerged within your own political party. At the time, you were marketing him as your vice presidential candidate. He's now the uh, vice president of the republic. You've sold him to the people of, of Ghana as the economic mazar. The next elections will be about the economy. The NDC says they are putting their best foot forward. You don't feel that it will be about the economy and that probably the best man you may want to put in for that job should be someone who spearheaded the economic management team? Yeah, it's, it's going to be about the economy, but there's a difference between an economy and economics. You see, look at all these um, Western countries, advanced countries. I, I, I can't point to anywhere right. mm -hmm. with a lead, an economist as a leader. Mm -hmm. But look at the way they built their economies. The economy is about movement. Uh, the ability to have people, services, move, interact, mm -hmm. and create value. So that's what we're talking about. And the economist will go and write about it and analyze the data that you generate. So these are two different things. So if you talk about the economy, we're talking about someone who's actually shown mm -hmm. that he's been able to create opportunities for people. He's created a movement, mm -hmm. the dynamics that have come together for people's personal economies to change. Mm -hmm. And we're going to aggregate all of these things and provide Ghana what they want. They want jobs. Mm -hmm. That's what people want. Mm -hmm. They don't want people record, uh, reporting on economic data. Mm -hmm. They want jobs. And he has shown that he can create jobs. And that's exactly what he's going to do. All you've shown me is that he's helped party faithful. No, I didn't say only party people. Yeah, but you haven't, you haven't pointed us to concretely what he's done to change for example, the, the, the lives of Ghana. For example, um, Casa Preku. You know, Alan headed Empretec. And through Empretech, he did groom and nurture a lot of big businesses you see now in Ghana. So right. he can see, he can see the potential and help put in place the kind of structures and systems, uh, the kind of environment that people need to be able to prosper. If you look at margins, mm -hmm. today margins is huge. Right. Margins was nothing, opposite Empretech. There were just some young men coming up. Right. Alan through Empretech brought them up. Even as uh, um, trade and industry minister, you can see what he's been able to do, provide the environment, the African free to trade. He did start it uh, as an envoy of um, uh, the AU, right, mm -hmm. trade advisor. Right. He started it, finished it up as a minister. Mm -hmm. He's created the environment. Now you have about five plants mm -hmm. doing different, you know, um, uh, versions of vehicles. Mm -hmm. 
He is that kind of person. That's right. what we're talking about. Because what we now need is someone who can create the kind of environment mm -hmm. for you and I to thrive. But, but that's the message you're selling. Others point to uh, the fact that he's been a member of the economic management team. The results are right here staring us in our face. Worst economic performance in the history of the Republic. We've never seen this before. Yeah, the economic management team is set. So if you're a, if you're a trade minister, you'll be there. If you're a vice president, you'll be chairman. Yeah. But he was a member. Yeah, I mean, extolled no, by the vice president at the time as absolutely. being a fantastic individual. Yeah, maybe maybe the bright spots of the economy came from him, because he was an amazing member of the committee. Mm -hmm. But I think it is not too good to look at things from that angle because mm -hmm. when you have such institutions, you right. have something we call collective responsibilities. Mm -hmm. For example, in this institution, yeah. you can go to management meetings. You can opine very differently. At the end of the day, the person sitting at the head of the table makes the decision. The chairman of the whatever the committee, committee, the board, yes. makes the decision. So the back will always stop with that person. So I don't want to go in detail and point fingers or whatever, but he was a member of the... the you don't know what went into mm. his... Well, I'm asking that point, uh, and we'll, we'll be wrapping up shortly, but I'm asking that question because of, <coughs> uh, for instance, the new promises making about the great transformational, transformational plan. plan. Many say, well, if you had all these amazing ideas... Why not give it to your boss at the time, Nana Dudankwa Kufando? He could have succeeded with the plan. What makes you think how he did it? He did? Maybe he did. And he didn't pursue You tell us. I don't know. You, you, you so you wouldn't know. The thing is that yeah. when you have collective responsibility, people sit down. Mm -hmm. You never can tell. And there's absolutely no way mm -hmm. Alan Chemati, me knowing Alan Chemati, that he's going to stand out there and say, I dissented here, I dissented there. No. It's a collective responsibility, but the box stops with the person at the head. He's asking you to make him the head. Mm -hmm. And when he gets there, hold him responsible. However, in his private life, in, even as a minister, please check what he did when he was sitting at the table, the head of the table, as minister, the things he was able to do. Mm -hmm. And then you look at what he was able to do in his private capacity. Mm -hmm. I've given you two examples of the many companies that he raised. Right. So he's telling you that I'm going to transform the economy. Mm -hmm. I know how to do that. I'm a diplomat, I'm a politician. He's going to deliver that to you. Uh, Sami, yes. let me give you a minute. Speak to the people of Ghana why you believe that your candidate is best fit to lead the NPP. I'm sure your delegates are listening as well. Well, I believe because at this moment we, we have issues and problems. Mm -hmm. Ghana's economy needs to be transformed. It needs to move forward. I think it's a very small economy. You need to have people who, who have done it before. They, they've had visions before and they've managed. They've managed the various elements, brought them together, moved them to create value. Mm -hmm. That is not economics. All right. It's building an economy. Mm. You don't need an economist to do that. All right. Grateful, Sami Krab, uh, for joining us.